Hello, my name is Margaret Adele and welcome to another indie book review. Basically the only kind of booktube videos I'm doing anymore. Regardless, today I am reviewing Dragon's Captive by Cassie Lockhart. This is actually the name for the duo of Kara Lockhart and Cassie Alexander. I have reviewed their Prince of the Other Realm series from start to finish. I think it's the only series I've reviewed beginning to finish at this point, but only because other series are just really long. Uh, but I enjoyed that one a lot. And this is kind of a dovetail series off that one. You do not have to have read the other one to understand this one, but it is a lot more fun because it does reference the uh, characters that get together in that one. And if you others that it doesn't really go in depth explaining in this one. So if you want to know some of the side characters in this one, you can go read that series. Most of the books are fairly short. Um, I really enjoyed them. And this one takes a different tact where the other series, Prince of the Other Realms, focused on one romantic couple for the entirety of the thing. I believe this one is going to do more of the standard indie romance series trope where each book is a different couple getting together and it kind of you, you work your way through the ensemble, um, which I almost kind of prefer uh, in a lot of ways because after a while it, it becomes hard to drag out uh, of romance without making it seem like the romance is really unhealthy and shouldn't work. And, like it got close a couple times in Prince of the Other Realms, but in Wardens we're a little bit better off. So this is all about Sammy, who is the protagonist's roommate from the other series, and uh, she kind of accidentally steals a thing, <laughs> a necklace with this a uh, strange red rock that she doesn't quite understand and it turns out that it's the key to an underwater lock that's keeping these horrible siren creatures from cutting through and this dragon named Rax really needs the lock to stay locked and needs the key to firmly shut it again and so like kidnaps her which admittedly not my favorite trope uh, but I did like that Sammy actually acts like a kidnapping victim she's not suddenly in love with him after like 30 pages She's leaving forensic evidence around his weird underground house and purposely trying to leave notes and things behind and getting really pissed at him and even <laughs> stabbing him at one point. It was great. Uh, in general, uh, she fights back a lot. And the big thing that I was noting of her backstory that I was uh, paying particular particular critical awareness to uh, was her background as a foster kid. Uh, you may know if you have watched my channel for a while that I am a foster parent. Uh, we recently had our one year anniversary of the first foster kid coming into our house and so I get real aware of how books and media portray foster care because a lot of them do it really poorly. But this one was actually decent. Uh, she entered this system at the age of eight, uh, which is a much more realistic age to be entering in to age out of. Usually if kids under the age of eight enter the system, they're, they're getting adopted. Um, and also it, it talks about the various emotional struggles she had with it. And it talks about... Um, she did have to go through a series of foster homes, but it wasn't because they were all evil and abusive. It was because, you know, this foster parent came down with cancer or this foster parent had a surprise pregnancy. You know, it, it was much more realistic and not, you know, evil foster parents. But also it talks about how, you know, her time in the system has made it hard for her to form attachments, which is also realistic. So A plus on that. <laughs> Having realistic foster representation. I know for the average person uh, that just wants to read a romance about a human and a dragon dude getting together, you probably don't care about that, but it means a lot to me. So the relationship in itself uh, is pretty properly steamy and uh, one of those not, it's not like enemies to lovers exactly, but there's definitely some of that oh god, I actually like him vibes going on in this story. And I highly appreciated that a lot. I also appreciated, and I'm going to try to be vague here, how she was a lot more active in solving the problem at the end than... Uh, Andy, the protagonist from the first series, ever was. And in a certain extent, it's really hard to make the human inactive part of the, the climax of the story when you're dealing with giant, like, reality-defying magic creatures 
breaking into the world, it's kind of hard to make them on the same level as like the dragon shifter dudes. But this one managed it to a certain extent. She was very gung ho, um, very take charge in a lot of ways, but also uh, her fear uh, was also very real in other ways and past trauma, etc. I very much appreciated that. And I liked seeing all of the characters from the previous series come back. I can gather who the next one would probably be because they basically tell you at the end of this one, oh, this dude's going to go off and and do the thing. Uh, but um, I appreciated that, so I'll probably continue with that one. This book was also a lot longer than most of the books from the Prince of the Other Realms series just because it was basically the whole romance instead of... Uh, the romance over several books, but I don't mind that. Uh, there are sex scenes, obviously. Uh, nothing too strange. If you read romance regularly, uh, it'll, it'll be things you're used to. Um, there was still that one scene in the car, uh, from the first book of The Prince of the Other Realms that got me, and nothing else that they've written has gotten me like that so far, but I am intrigued to see if they can top it moving forward. Um, regardless, I gave this book four stars. One star taken off purely because kidnap trope just never fully sits well with me. And yes, if he wasn't really kidnapping her. He just needed the necklace that wouldn't come off, but like still kept me from being a full yay five stars. Uh, but if you like that trope, or at least just don't actively dislike it, you'll probably enjoy this book a lot. So, unfortunately, I am still closed. Even though I am only doing indie reviews as booktube videos, I still am not getting through them that fast, and I don't really want to pick up the pace. <laughs> so, still closed for now, unless, of course, you are an indie author whose work I have reviewed before and have given the previous book in the series a minimum of four stars or more. Um, if you're unsure, if you qualify and I have reviewed your work before, just send me an email. Um, I would really love to get open again by summer, but it is looking less and less likely. Anyway, with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.